and welcome to this week's edition of PC Voyage. I'm Andrew Doty. And I'm Randy Laviolette. I'd like to welcome you to the second season of PC Voyage. This season, we're going to bring you some great topics. How a bulletin board is run, among other things. We're going to take you to a computer fair and teach you how to buy a computer. And uh, we're going to bring uh, people in here and demonstrate spreadsheets and word processors and all kinds of other novice software. But now, Finally, we're going to get the opportunity to give away the software that we promised you we'd give away this season. And here is our producer, Keith Davis, to introduce the lucky recipient. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. We know. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your computer, Andy? It looked like it blew up. Yeah. I hope that doesn't happen too much. Oh, you heard of Hurricane Andy? Yes. That's me. Okay, <laughs> real good. Well, we're here to give away software tonight. Uh, but first, before we do that, um, I would like, as I say, to take this opportunity to uh, thank the nice people here at Continental Cablevision for all the support and the training that they've uh, afforded us so we can produce our show here. Uh, Marty Schuler, the general manager, Cecilia Lang uh, in charge of access, uh, Mark St. Jean, uh, access coordinator, who is our mentor and helps us out uh, quite a bit, and uh, Jeff Zomick producer and star in his own right uh, <laughs> on mine. has helped us out quite a bit and um, we'd uh, like to express our thanks to them we we get to use uh, the studio facilities and um, uh, literally thousands of dollars of camera equipment and editing equipment and uh, because of that we can produce the show at a very no very nominal cost to ourselves and I would urge anyone out there who is interested in, in any kind of video production to contact your local cable company and see what they have to offer for training and uh, for facilities. It, it really is the cable dollars being returned to the community if you take advantage of that. So don't pass it up if, if you have the chance. And now we're going to give away software and uh, like Andy and Rainey said, we. Um, uh, went through uh, 12 shows saying that we were going to give away the software. And we, what we did last season was invite people to uh, write questions into us that we tried to get answered on the show. And we also asked people to send in uh, comments and suggestions about the show. In fact, tonight's show is a result of a suggestion that was sent in. And um, we said that uh, if you supplied your name and address, we would uh, make you eligible to win this uh, batch of software. And this was supplied to us by various guests that we had on the show uh, last season. Uh, we have um, uh, X-Tree Gold, which is a nice uh, uh, utility. Uh, PC Tools, which was uh, left here by Jeff Honeycomb of Central Point Software. Mm -hmm. right? That's correct. And Bruce Oliver from Microsoft Corporation, uh, home of Bill Gates. Ooh. <laughs> Don't everybody bow at once here. Uh, left us uh, Windows 3.1. You, you guys over there can stay seated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and our good friend at uh, Prodigy Service, Liz Price, uh, left uh, a Prodigy starter kit. And with uh, Prodigy, we had a live on-air demonstration with that. And uh, one person who uh, wrote a question to us was Brad Perkins of South Hadley. And he indeed is the winner of all this software here. And wouldn't you know it, He's here in the studio tonight. So come on out here, uh, Brad. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, we appreciate you writing in, and we appreciate uh, uh, everyone else who wrote us a note or sent a question in. And we would ask that everybody uh, do the same thing this season, because we will have more software to give away. So here's uh, PC Tools, x -Tree Gold, Windows, and Prodigy. OK, so, thank you. And uh, enjoy it. There has got to be a couple hundred dollars worth of software there anyway. We'd like to thank those people who gave us the software as well for, uh, you know, for our little uh, miniature raffle slash uh, send in your question. Giveaway. Yeah, giveaway. Get, get to the it's point. a giveaway. Get to the point, yeah. <laughs> so uh, well, we've taken up enough of uh, Andy and Rainey's time here, so we'll get back to the show. We will be right back. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Chip and this week's trivia questions, and then uh, we'll be back with the rest of the show. And they'll, they'll demonstrate what all this stuff is out here. So we'll be back. Here are this week's computer trivia questions. Number one. What kind of hard drive is Esker? An RLL drive or an IDE drive? 
and number two. Which kind of monitor has a sharper picture? One with 0.38 dpi or one with 0.21 dpi? Welcome back. What we decided to do tonight is a little departure from what we did last season. And tonight, we've got all this computer equipment laid out on this table. We're going to go through it. A lot of people don't know what the various parts of a computer are, or and in some cases here, what's actually inside your computer. So we've decided to break apart Andy's computer, not mine, and yes, yours, and uh, show you what each one of these parts does and how it fits into the total scheme of the computer. And uh, we might try to jam it all together afterwards. No, we're not. Um, so what we're going to start with here is we're going to start down here at the input end. Things that everybody's familiar with that you all have on your, on your computer. This one here is an 84 key keyboard. This one here is the old AT style keyboard with the function keys down the left side of the keyboard. And the new modern keyboards, this one here is a 101 key keyboard with the 12 function keys along the top as opposed to the 12, the 10 down the left side. Uh, one of the, some of the variations on this keyboard will have, some keyboards will have a larger enter key here with the purpose that they figure that you don't like the, lar the smaller enter key and they'll give you a half size backspace key. Personally, with the mistakes I make, I'd rather have the larger backspace key and the smaller enter key, but not all keyboards are like this. Now, Randy, the arrow keys are also separate, aren't, aren't they? Yeah, on, on, on this keyboard, as opposed to the 84, I don't know if you can get that, the arrow keys are laid out separately off onto, the, onto their, their own area there. And uh, the keypad's always separate. The original IBM PC keyboard had the keypad integrated in with the rest of the keyboard. And what happened was it made it very difficult to figure out which were the numeric uh, input keys and which was the regular keys. So they finally split them out. And then they took the gray, what they call the gray keys, and blew them with the arrows so you can uh, uh, move around a little bit better and still have the full function keyboard, uh, keypad. Did I kill that enough? Oh, yeah. uh, also, the other most important input device of, of this day is the mouse. Everybody has a keyboard and a mouse normally. Programs like Windows and a lot of DOS software require you to have a mouse or recommend that you have a mouse. In most cases, you don't need it, but it's really recommended that you have it. So this is another important device. This one here is a serial mouse, and there are different kinds of mice as well. There's serial mice, there's parallel mice that have a round connector that fit into the back of your computer, usually into its own specific card. Um, I guess that's about it there. One of the uh, next things that we have here are probably like the most important uh, device you're going to think find in your PC, aside from the actual computer, are your floppy drives. Uh, we have with us today two floppy drives, the two that you're going to be using most of the time, the 1.443.5 inch drives and the 5.25 inch 1.2 meg drives. Now what's happened here is the size of the original drive, as you can see here, was a little large and uh, the capacity is much smaller than the 3.5. What they came out with was a 3.5 inch drive that actually has the drive in a satellite assembly that fits into the old style slots. That way, if you have an old style computer, you can plug this drive right in there, right into this assembly, and slide this into the same space as this one was going to take. Again, the capacity is greater on this one. You get about 240K more on these three and a half inch drives than you did if you were using the old five and a quarter, and they're more rigid. More sturdy. What's the trend going to? Is the trend going to a five and a quarter or a three and a half? Or? The trend's going more towards three and a half at this point in time. Again, the floppies are, are a lot easier to deal with, and the drives are smaller and take up less space and less power. So, What about software that you buy? Don't you have to worry that if you only have one of these drives that your software is either a five and a quarter or a three and a half? A lot of the softwares today are explicitly marked on the box, or uh, they will even give you dual media. So you, whatever you have, it'll work with. Great, great. Uh, what we're going to talk about now, or next we have on this table here as we go across, are hard drives. Most everybody has at least a 20 meg hard drive. And one of the things that we've got here is this one here is an old five and a quarter inch 20 meg hard drive. This one is also a 20 meg hard drive, but as you can see, it's only three and a half inches wide. 
uh, about the size of the three and a half inch disk drive. Uh, the drives these days are getting smaller. They're getting more capacity, uh, greater densities. Uh, this one here is an old 10 meg drive. And as you can see, the height and the size of this, it's a five and a quarter inch size, but it's twice the height, don't mind me reaching, twice the height of the, the newer um, 20 meg drives. Now you can get, in fact, I've got one of these on my machine at work. It's a three and a half inch drive, but it's 212 meg. So, you know, you can get drives that are three and a half inch drive that go up to about a gig and a quarter. 1.2 gigabytes, which is uh, a whole lot more than what these old 10 megs used to be able to have on. Quite a few of them drives, in fact. Uh, quite a few of them. And next up on our, uh, on our list is probably the most important thing in your computer. How about the computer? Uh, with us today, we have a standard, okay, uh, board. This board is a uh, 286 motherboard. Uh, yes, it's a 286. It's not my PC. Uh, did come out of service. The board is equipped with, with different size slots. And the thing to look for is how many of these slots do you have? The shorter slots are 16-bit slots. They will only take, I'm sorry, 8-bit slots. It'll only take 8-bit cards, hence cards that are this small and only have one connector on them. These cards are slower because the original IBM only used this part of the board, these slots here. The new ATs, the 286s, 386s, and 486s, have a little extension on the end. This is a 16-bit slot. This allows the PC to operate at a much faster speed between its internal workings and the cards that you plug into it. Okay? The memory is generally assembled onto the board itself. Here we have a couple of rows of chips in there. You would expand this with different types to get your different memories. This has two meg. You could fill this up with another meg, or you could use any variants and chips that you like for the specific board. Again, the thing to look at is how many of the slots are there, and how many of them are 16-bit slots. Now, the reason for getting a PC with those slots in them are so that you can use cards such as this. This card here is a 16-bit card. This uh, just also happens to be the floppy and hard drive controller. So this is the thing that most is likely to give you problems aside from the drives themselves. When you start having problems with your disks or your hard drives, take a look at this. This may be the problem. Okay, you plug your hard drives into this. This is a 16-bit card. An easy way to tell is you have two plugs on the top. Okay, and those two plugs will allow the machine to operate at a much faster speed with this card. What, what kind of problems could somebody have if, if they had a problem with their hard drive controller? What could they do about it sh short of uh, replacing the whole card? They could actually uh, test it out by using a different card uh, or run some form of diagnostic software, and that may tell them uh, what exactly is going on. Most of the time, you really don't wind up having too many problems with those cards, but when you do, it's definitely good to consider those and take a good look at them. Another difference is, is the long and the short card. This is a long card. This is a short card. Now, these cards are probably very rarely used today. In fact, in fact, these are both uh, hard, drive hard drive and floppy drive controllers. Mm -hmm. Both are. And as you can tell by looking at the two, that they both have the same number of pin spaces, but one is a lot more condensed and a lot smaller, more of a modern card. These, you very rarely will find a PC with these today. And your low-profile cases may not even take these cards. So be careful what you, if you have a PC that you're disassembling and swapping parts on, you may not be able to take these full-size cards. You, you're not likely to find one, though, these days. Most cards are, are the smaller, either three-quarter size or, or full half size. Mo most of the cards are the three-quarter size or half size. The easiest way to tell is this is a three-quarter size card and this is a half size card. One of the other things you're going to probably want to have in your PC so that you can use your little rodent is a serial and parallel port. This lets you talk to your mouse, your printer, even a, uh, you know, even a joystick or whatever else uh, you'd like to attach. And these cards are basically a must if you really want to use the, the other devices. Uh, and most systems today are coming through with at least one parallel and one serial built right onto the motherboard itself. 
Uh, one of the notes I want to make about the motherboard is you can see here where it's got the spot for the keyboard. And a lot of motherboards now will have extra spots for a serial port, parallel port, and a lot of them will even have a mouse option right on the motherboard itself. And last but not least, the good old video board. This has to go along with your monitor. Um, this is equipped with its own memory. It does its own thinking. The system says, hey, look, this is what you got to, you know, this is what you have to display for me, and the card takes care of it. Obviously, the different costs, different resolutions, and so on and so forth, that's what you want to consider. And okay. what, what is this card here? Is this a VGA card? This is card? a VGA card. This is actually a super VGA card. What about an EGA card or a CGA card? CGA card would just have less memory and less, re less resolution. Uh, EGA card would again have less memory and a slightly greater resolution than that of CGA. What about price? I Prices. Mean, can't, you, can't you really find a, an inexpensive? Prices are a lot different. Prices uh, are ranging. Uh, these cards are now less than uh, CGA and EGA cards used to be before they were phased out. You can buy these for about $75 now. Well, Chip is going to come up and uh, tell us our trivia answer. That's right. We'll be right, right. back. We'll be right back. Here are this week's computer trivia answers. Number one. An IDE drive is faster than an RLL drive. And number two, a monitor with 0.21 dpi is sharper than one with 0.38 dpi. Welcome back. You know, that trivia question was a real hard one this week. We don't know what it was. Uh, I want to get back here to finish up the rest of what we've brought with us to explain uh, different computer components. Uh, next thing up is something you put into your motherboard. This is a 64K chip. I don't know which camera here, this one here. 64K chip. And the motherboard that Andy showed, is this better? The one that Andy showed on the motherboard would, would take these kinds of chips. Nine of these make up 256K. So you would need to have two and a half banks of these to make up 640. On the other hand, these are the new modern SIM chips that just click. It's like a mini board. They click right into the PC. And you notice there's nine chips on here. And this is a 256K chip as well, a 256K board as well. So you pop this in versus having nine full chips to pop in. There's a lot less problems with this because these pins here can break as you're putting them in, as you're taking them out. And this one here, because it's just a board, it just pops right in. Now, you can get the SIM chips in both 256 and both, all three. 256, 512s, and 1 megs. Uh, the 2 meg ones, I guess, are out now, and two the 4 megs ones are coming out well. shortly. And they're all this size. So memory is getting more, it's getting smaller, but they're making it more, uh, more dense. It also, it also eliminates the static uh, effect. So you, holding onto this chip, you could accidentally zap it. Holding onto this is a little bit more difficult. It plugs right in, it's easier to hold. Right. Now, one question a lot of people ask me is about video cards, which is what this is, talking about the memory chips on a video card. Now, a video card can have, especially VGAs, can have either 256, 512, or 1 megabyte of RAM on them. The difference has to do with the, 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 uh, yeah, help resolution, me out here. The, the resolution, thank you. The resolution of, of the card itself. A 640 by 480 card would have a standard 256 on it. Uh, 600 by 800 would have 512 on it and a 1024 by 768 would have one meg on it. So the more memory, the greater the resolution. And the, right, okay. right. And you, could, you can get higher resolutions, but you have to have a board with more memory. That's good. Next up, we have uh, with us uh, little what devices. Are all if, guests or something? Yeah, I think so. Next up, uh, hey, we have devices that you may want to use to communicate outside of your house, and those are modems. Okay, and we have two devices with us today. We have one little internal card. The nice things about these are is that you plug them into your PC, run the phone cord right up into the back of the PC, and these modems are fully self, uh, they take care of themselves actually, fully <laughs> self-supporting. They, uh, they dial, they answer, they'll do whatever you like, and all from within your PC. Uh, also, also keep a note that they take up a COM port, a communications port if you use it this way. You normally have either COM1 or COM2. This will take up one of those communications ports. Right, and it is inside. There's a speaker on here. Sometimes it's a little hard to hear, 
but they're nice if you want to keep your PC all in one. The alternative is an external device such as what we have here. Okay, this is an external modem. It is quite large. Um, are these both the same speed? No, these are not both the same speed. The internal card is a 2400 baud modem. This does roughly four times that speed. Uh, it does a minimum of 9600 baud. There's also a difference in price. Obviously, these cards sell somewhere around $75. These sell for somewhere around $500. So it's a little, there's a little difference in, in, the, in the price here. Um, and the device is, uh, it, it depends on what you want to have. You like to have it internal, to have the PC more portable, use the internal cards. If you want to have uh, a bigger modem, you like the external, get the external modem. Now here's another very important device. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. That's my stereo. Uh, how'd it get in here? All right, Glenn, it must be you, right? Well, we don't need to have this. This has nothing to hey, do with the computer. Hey, go easy on that. Getting back to the important stuff, this is the, the heart of your computer. This is the power supply. This is what your computer needs to run. The lifeblood. The lifeblood. On, off switch. And they put the little zero for off in the eye for the one for on, uh, sort of a computer kind of a thing. And they give you all these little cords out the back. I hope this doesn't go to anything. It does. Uh, it gives you all the little cords out in the back, different power cords. This one here has got six power cords on here. Uh, how, what's the capacity of this one? 200 watt power supply. For most computers, 200 watts is just fine. Uh, this isn't the kind of thing you normally go in and try to repair. Uh, there's very high voltage going in through these things, and it's not the kind of thing you want to muck around inside. No, no user serviceable parts inside. Right. On the back of this, these what we, this is what would come out of the back of your computer. Power supply cord and the cord for the monitor power supply. These tend to get a little dirty as well, by the way, because there's a fan inside these. So you may want to get your vacuum cleaner out every now and then, vacuum out the fan, keep the thing nice and clean. You just okay? take the cover off, run the vacuum through, and you have no problems. Now, here's another important part. These, this one here and this one here are both... Uh, power supplies, or power strips, I guess you would want to put them. Uh, make sure that, don't plug your computer directly into your wall outlet. Plug your computer into a full protection surge suppressor. Now, you can pick these up just about anywhere. They're fairly inexpensive. Uh, this one here is a UPS, uninterruptible power supply. And what the purpose of this the UPS is, is that if the power goes out and you have a computer that needs to be running, you can use that and it will always be running. It runs for about 20 minutes. Gives you enough time while the lights are out to turn your computer off, shut it down, and go back to normal or hope the power, power comes back. Depending on how much you have uh, plugged into it. Next up we have a sound card. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people who say, well, my computer isn't for playing games. Yeah, uh, I know a lot of people who still play games on their computer. These can make the games a lot more fun. Or, if you're going to do multimedia presentations, these cards will allow the computer to create music and sound and range anywhere in price from $100 up to $200. There, is, there are ports on the back where you can plug microphones into it. You can uh, take the output from here, plug it right into your home stereo so that you have that really uh, perfect stereo digital sound. And, and most games today do support this. Uh, so you can get real high quality sound out of your computer games themselves. Okay. Now, one thing we want to talk about quickly as we move along here is media. Now, one of the ways to back up your hard drive is a tape. Now, these are both tapes. This one here is a 120 meg tape, and this one here is a 60 meg tape. Uh, yes, it, it seems kind of funny that the, the higher one, the more dense one is uh, smaller, but the trend is towards smaller tape drives. We also have here other methods of backing up. You have your high density three and a half inch, your low density three and a half inch, and one way you can tell the difference is that one has two holes and the three the seven twenty only has one hole. And you can also back up to three to three <coughs> the three sixty Ks or one point two meg five and a quarter inch floppies. Now you don't want to I wouldn't advise backing up to these unless you have to. Uh, it takes a lot of disks, but it is important to do backups. Make sure you always do your backups. You will be there forever. Oh, yeah. Okay, and next up, we have on our storage platforms, we have a CD-ROM drive. Okay, now CD-ROM drives will actually take about 600 of these and put them onto one standard ROM. And the easiest way to tell is that 
that you're using is that these are actually, honest to goodness, CD or CDs. They have the same boxes that your normal household audio CDs come in. And you insert them in the drive, you insert them in the special drives. The drives go for around $350 to $400. And these drives will hold about 700 meg worth of space. That's a whole lot of them, little floppies. Okay. Last but not least, we have the display. Your good old VGA, uh, VGA monitor. In this specific case, we have a 14 inch monitor. Again, if you want to measure the monitors, they are measured diagonally, they are not measured across. Okay, the more you spend, the better the quality of the picture. That's the thing to remember. You also have to get a monitor that will work with the video card that you have installed in your system. You don't want to get an EGA card and spend $400 on a good monitor when you're really not going to take full potential of that monitor. Well, I think we did a great job so far. Uh, we'll be right back after this, after our address, after this message. Yeah. We'll be right back after Chip gives you our address so you can send us more ideas on the kind of things you'd like to see on our show. Be right back. If you have any questions, or if you have any comments about the show, please write to us. Our address is PC Voyage, PO Box 6295, Holyoke. Massachusetts 01041. We appreciate hearing from you. Uh, you know, we've gone through basically br briefly explained uh, some of the pro some of the devices inside your PC. Uh, if you'd like us to elaborate on any one of these devices, please feel free to write us and let us know. And sure. uh, who knows if we have another uh, little giveaway this year. Your name may be one of them. That's right. Also, one thing we didn't brush on, and I'd like to talk about this for a second, is especially if you buy a computer at a computer fair or from a friend or something else, is make sure you get manuals with the software that comes on the systems. All too often, and especially at a computer fair, uh, mail order, uh, they may give you DOS on the hard drive and say it comes with DOS, but unless you get the manuals and a license agreement, you may be getting a pirated piece of software. And it's very important for yourself as well as making sure that what you have is legal and being able to upgrade it and get support that you have legitimate manuals for every piece of software you have on your machine. Uh, and that goes for DOS and Windows and any other piece of software that you might use. Hey, did that come out of his box of software? No, this came out of mine at, mine <laughs> at work. Thank you. I'll, on, on that note, I think we'll uh, close this edition of PC Voyage. Sure. I'm Andrew Doty. I'm Rainy LaViolette. Until next time. See you next week.